grab your popcorn, kick back and relax because it's time for some more carnage. So in today's video we're going to be looking at how to do Kalisto and this one's going to be using brick. So there's two different ways of doing Kalisto. One version with bullet which is in my opinion is a much easier hit. And then there's this, this version with brick. Now this one is a very hard hit because it uses a very advanced um, technique called mortar wrapping. So pretty much what you do, because Zookas have a range of about 6 tiles, um, if you time your flare on this, this, um, what's it called, this flamethrower, when in the right, in the right, as they're walking, sort of past, um, these mortars, then you, you flare the core, they'll sort of like, um, like, the, because you flared on this flamethrower, they wrap around the mortar, within the dead spot and this allows you to get like a really really much easier like like position behind the core without having to take out any buildings this means you really only have to shock that stuff as opposed to other areas where you'd have a little bit more um, also then you'd have to shock two mortars on this side as well so it winds up being about a five shock hit with this stuff the flamethrowers, the rockets, and these two mortars. So, anyway, let's watch the attack. Let's see what happens. So, you can see that some mines are going to be taken out. That one, and in particular, this one, I am guessing, yes. So, two artillery. There is an artillery cost reduction tribe right now. Now, in my opinion, I may have left that boom mine just because... GBE, but if you have it, if you have the amount to take it out, go for it. If not, don't be too worried about that. It won't take out a large chunk. So these rockets in range. So we're going to have to do a two smokes there. Now that our Zookas are starting to get near the kill, uh, sorry, near the next flare location, you'll see that you'll give it a second. Now you pressed on the the right tile just below this cannon here. Now, although he placed on the right tile, you can push it on the middle one. Um, either one's not going to be too big of an issue there. So as his Zookas walk up to that flare location, he will be pressing on the screen for his next one. So you've seen that. Um, so that was the left tile right underneath the first mortar, which is good. So what this is going to do is he's going to give him a path right between these buildings. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to be a super tight path where they go on only one side of it. But it's still a pretty good path. I mean, if you look at it, you still get a nice path that avoids pretty much all the mines without hitting them. So that's really our only goal on this attack. You couldn't really do much better. So as they approach this flare, rather, and keep in mind that we're pre-smoking pre so that bullet doesn't lose our delay. Uh, sorry, brick doesn't lose our delay. Um, so I believe, okay, so I'll have to half times it now. So the next flare will be above this mortar on the left tile. And I, I believe it's about three, three, three tiles thereabouts of leeway that we give our troops before we place that next flare up so it'll be like at the start as our troops approach sort of like this first cannon the cannon in the back there um but we will see i'll try to keep everything on screen so you guys can see it and okay there so we've seen the flare so you guys can see that he's they're leaving that last cannon and it's going to give him about two tiles and then about half a second where they sort of sit there because we don't really want them to have time to sort of get there stop and then start spreading out because that'll screw things up for us so by timing it watch what happens look at that they, they get to the flare and now before they can have time to start spreading out the flare drops now they're going this is going to allow them to walk on the left side of these mortars um, we're going to we're going to smoke accordingly, and 
Okay, so you guys just seen the flare here. Um, so that's like as they're leaving that second mortar. Just as they're about to leave it. We place that flare on this flamethrower. And this is going to allow us to like... It's going to hit as our Zookas are walking like middle of that... That mortar that's upgraded a lot next to the core. And they will spread right around it. So remember, I said they can walk about three tiles before that... Uh, flare hit. So you guys look at that. They're all in the dead spot of that that mortar. So now I think it'll be about 10 o'clock ish that we start seeing shocks. So this one gets placed first and then that one and then that one I believe. Um, or, well it'll probably be more like this, this, that and then that. Um, he does use tiny shocks which is a temporary gunboat ability at this time for these two mortars but for you guys you guys won't be able to rely on that because you guys probably won't be able to have that so just do another shock there and just just include that in your shock pattern so it's like you press this 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 sorry this and then that um, and that'll sort of be how you do your shock pattern so I will sh wait and try to see if I can find the tap on the screen for this um, and I'll try to pause it at that moment why isn't it oh, okay we're not quite there yet there we go so we just seen the press wow that's kind of late 11 o'clock boom so I I think I messed that up I think so that one was that one was the earliest, so maybe I messed that timing up. We'll go back and we'll see. Um, I really do feel like I messed that up because there's no way he started shocking that late. He would have died very quickly had he done that. So I will go back because by the looks that top one had the latest time on it. So I'll sort of zoom out a little bit and I'll see this time if I zoomed out we'll see sort of like um, if we can see those presses a little bit better um, well wow. half times so we'll this time we'll try to focus on this one so this press will be about here and this press will be on that one so um, we'll see if we can see that press so I really did think he pressed at about 10 o'clock see so yeah so we did he did so I just seen the press there that one was just happened then so I was right and then it'll be like this one and this one, I think. Yep. And now we see the temporary gunboat ability used there. And, uh... Bang, bang. So, I will let this attack sort of play out now. And... Core goes down. So what was the health on that? I forgot to show that. 642%. So, I think you guys will like that, that attack, I hope. Uh, mortar wrapping is a very hard skill. Not everyone can do a mortar wrap. It's a very technical hit. It requires perfect timing. The shocks, there's quite a lot of shocks in like... Well, I mean, fire shocks isn't the most shocks you'll ever do in a, on a higher level operation. But, the hard part is just getting the timing on them all right. That's the hardest part. Because, you can just like... Speedy press be like bang 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 and try to get them but if it's like precise shocks then it gets harder and the hard the hard shock I would say is the flamethrowers above because you don't want you, you want to get the mortar without like the mortars around them without getting your troops but you still want to get enough flamethrowers to where your zookas aren't going to get hit so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed the attack. If you did, smack the thumbs up button. Tell me what you thought in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. And by the way, before I press the stop button on my recording, um, I did say that there is a way of doing this with bullets. So if I can find some gameplay for that, I will definitely be uploading the bullet version of Kalisto on another video. So you guys will be able to see both approaches. So... I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.